This is Bridging the Geekdoms Podcast, a show where a couple of nerds shoot the shit and do their best at bridging all the geekdoms together as they talk movies, television, video games, comics, and so much more. As always, here are your hosts, Robert Slavinsky and Colton Bird. Penis. <laughs> well, hello there, folks. How is it going? Penis. Oh, that's good. So what's <laughs> going on? that accurately <laughs> describes how my life's going. <laughs> Penis. Uh, so yeah, this is Bridging the Geekdoms, uh, brought to you by the Nerd Talkalypse Podcast Network. I'm Robert. Wah, wah, wah! I'm Robert, and with me is Colton Burr. Yeah, boy. Skinny penis. Yeah. So, how's it going, buddy? Uh, well, it's, it's going. Imagine a train wreck, and then imagine a duck watching a train wreck, and I'm that duck. You're that duck. Yeah, trying to distance myself from the train wreck. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. So, what's been going on with you, man? What's been, um, been doing this past week? Uh, work. I saw The Incredibles too. That was pretty tits. Tits. Um, I don't know. What else did I do? I finished The Office <laughs> for the sixth time. Um, I started reading some more Lovecraft stuff. Really? Yeah, because I, I found a... Well, I think I told you about how I found a book on Amazon Prime. Or was it Amazon Prime? Maybe it was the Kindle store. I don't know. It was like 49 cents for like ha- like a third of his stories. Okay, fuck it. Mm-hmm. So I bought it, and I've been reading it. I did read that Prometheus comic as well. Did you read all three issues? Fuck yeah. So I read the, just the first issue. Does it get a lot better? Oh, my God. I want... Give me all of the issues, please. Um. Yeah, I, I can't remember who the guy was. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Here. But that, that story is in- interesting. Like, the second issue really hooked me when you get introduced to the, uh, the, the gate guard. Okay. And he has like these two different masks, but he's three different personalities depending on the mask. And if he doesn't have a mask on, he's like a fucking psychopath. It's fucking awesome. So a guy tweeted me um, back at the beginning of June, June 1st, and it was like 2.20 in the a.m. Um, the guy's name's Ryan Little at Mr. Ryan Comics. Hi, Ryan. Uh, he goes, hey, wanted to reach out to see if you accept free advanced copies of comics to review. I'd love to send you the first three issues of my fantasy revenge thriller Prometheus. Check out. We're launching issue three on Kickstarter on 612. You can see some art and more about the book here. Uh, so he gave me a website or, to Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, I asked him to send them to me and we're reading them. I only got the first issue done, but you you read all three. Dude, it's good. And then the third one, this mysterious like hot guy's like chasing down from atheists. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I definitely uh, so far I've I'm like yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, it looks like it's got, yeah, no, got a good got review me. from from Colton as do, well. Do you have a fourth issue out, my guy? Why am I talking to you here? I should just message you on Twitter <laughs> yeah. or or follow you on Kickstarter. I should support you. But yeah, no, it's it's good. I liked it. I very thoroughly enjoyed the first three issues. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I'm gonna finish that probably this week. Um, I just haven't had time this yeah. past weekend with Father's Day and my son's birthday and stuff like yeah. that. So. Uh, National Not Pull Out Day. <laughs> National Not Pull Out Day. <laughs> um, Thanks, Dad, for not pulling out. Happy Father's Day to all of you guys that are listening. <laughs> Uh, this, yeah, honestly, this week I haven't done much. I've been watching Community, uh, still, um, and besides that, I mean, I, I mean, my, my youngest son, he's been wanting to go through the Star Wars saga. All right. He's, yeah. he's about to be seven in a couple weeks. Um, and now I think he's, he's starting to understand some of it. He's starting to get it. He's still asking a lot of questions from time to time. He's like, cause he was really confused at the time jump between episode one and two mm-hmm. he's like where'd the guy go that that killed darth maul and i'm like he's right there he's like yeah. no that's not him that, that's jesus <laughs> <laughs> I'm like no that's obi-wan that's obi trust me it's obi-wan so you know he's still a little confused with that stuff but he's really getting into it like he wants to watch them and um at first he was just like i'll watch them in any order i was like no why don't you know <laughs> nah. I, I, well see i have this specific order i i love the machete order that's yeah. my, my favorite way to watch them but <clears throat> That's watching them as um, a fan already. Yeah, someone who's watched them 10 million times. Exactly. Before. So, you know, with him, because of him being a kid, and I've, mm. and I've always said this, you know, if it's a child watching it, start one, two, yeah. three, that kind of thing. Uh, it's just easier that just, way. And plus, 
Phantom Menace hooks them, and and I think I, I yeah, I don't know it's if I Charger. Brought, I don't know if I brought it up in podcast last week. I did say something on Twitter about it, but it's really interesting because, I mean, my my son he's watched Star Wars multiple times mm. uh, over the years, but he's not watched it. You yeah. know, he just he's liked Star Wars. We've gone and see the Force Awakens, the Last Jedi, Solo, that kind of stuff in the theater, but he just he doesn't get it. He just likes yeah. the lightsabers. The he's fighting. like, oh, lights. And it, it's one of those things. It's like Dad likes it, so I'm gonna like it. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. But now that he's getting into it, uh, he was sitting there a couple weeks ago watching The Phantom Menace, and I actually gained a new respect for the movie mm. watching it through his eyes. Yeah. Because... You See, know, that's that's the generation gap between me and you. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, I sit there, and, and don't get me wrong, I, it's still my least favorite. No, it's out of the an whole awful saga. movie. <laughs> but, you know, sitting there and, and the excitement that he has... Uh, at the pod race, and when Darth Maul shows up, and that mm. lightsaber battle, all that stuff, like when Jesus fights Satan, he's so into the movie, it's it's mm-hmm. crazy. And what was even crazier, and like I said, you know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go on on the journey one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, but that same weekend, we actually watched uh, three of the movies. We watched mm. the Phantom Menace, and then um, my daughter, uh, who's only four years old. Mm. Uh, convinced Bobby to uh, watch um, Return of the Jedi instead of going to episode two. Mm. So we went one, six, and then the two. Oh, jeez. So we went to six, but the only reason why, she because she's like, Princess Leia, I want to see Princess Leia, you know? Mm. But little does she know, she's not really a princess in the movie. It doesn't matter. She just wanted yeah. to see her. So, you know, we ended up watching Return of the Jedi, and... Uh, I kind of had to step out of the, the room at that time because I had to get dinner ready, stuff like that, but I kept walking into the room. And yeah. Return of the Jedi is still one of my top two, three favorite of the whole saga. I mean, when mm. I was a kid, it was my favorite. It was the movie that I could sit there and yeah. watch all the time. It was the Ewoks. All the time. And it, it, it was the Ewoks. <laughs> no, for me, it was the lightsaber battle. The, yeah. the, the, the culmination of everything at the end. Mm-hmm. That whole ending was so powerful. And as a kid, I saw that and like, I understood that. My God. Yeah, so you know, to me, I loved it. I hated the beginning with Jabba's palace and mm. Jabba's no, it, Jabba's episode sail, six sail starts barge. off real slow. Yeah, I hate how how slow it starts. But I'm sitting there and whoops, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sex machine powered down. <laughs> <laughs> no more sucky for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but Bobby's watching Return of the Jedi, and I look at him at one point, and he is completely enthralled it like mm. he was not blinking he was not moving <laughs> you're he like the sun is, is you movie. alive and i was like that was me like when i was a kid when i was a little kid watching star wars that was me that is how mm. i looked and acted watching star wars i was that obsessed i was like this is crazy because that weekend not only was he watching a shit ton of star wars but mm. he was playing halo also I was like, yeah. he's a little me like he's yeah he's he, me he's stepping into the footsteps yeah. or he's putting putting on the shoes there we go yeah. putting on the shoes so, uh, but yeah, that we did that this weekend, you know, celebrated my, my oldest son's birthday and Father's Day stuff. So that's pretty much all I got this past week or so. Yeah, more eventful than mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I guess we'll jump in. Uh, this is what's, <laughs> this is what's the geek Oop. and, uh, we'll get to the non-geek Oop. news first. Nope. I thought I pulled out my cord. <laughs> Uh, so movie pass now screen rant screen rant.com I, I enjoy that website from time to time yeah, most of their stuff's clickbait though. <laughs> Again, exactly most of it's clickbait but every once in a while they have a really really good article on there and I like lists mm. like I love yeah, reading same. lists and screen rant has a ton of lists 90% screen rant is a list 90% of the time I don't agree with what their lists <laughs> you do yeah. but I still go back to them so yeah. uh, but they actually had a really really good interview with the president of movie pass and uh just a few things i want to uh, you know point out in this and i i highly recommend going and finding the article and reading it because it's an excellent read uh but you know he mentions a bring a friend concept of movie pass and he's saying that it could launch as early as this july uh and from the sound of it it sounds like it's going to be for current subscribers so if you mm-hmm. have the 995 deal Woo. uh you'll be able to once a month bring a friend you know so yeah. you get Two tickets, essentially, you know, it to sucks, one movie. Though. The only people I would take to a movie with me, we all have movie pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, the nine ninety five price point isn't at this time or um, going anywhere at the times. 
I don't know what I was putting there when I wrote that, but at this time isn't going anywhere. So uh, he said that, you know, they're always looking at, you know, different ways to enhance mm. the the membership and everything like that. A couple months ago, yeah, they did try some different things. It mm. didn't go off very well. <laughs> at but, all. But, you know, that's kind of what they're doing. So as of right now, that 995 price point isn't going anywhere soon. And also, which I think is the... This is what I was looking for a month and a half ago. Whenever yeah, I was like, whenever why did we they like, limit to... Why can't I see Infinity War four times? And to me, it makes sense. Now, the reason for limiting to seeing a movie only one time with the past was due to people cheating the system with their buddies. So, for mm. instance, let's say, Colton, you go and get Movie Pass for nine ninety five. Yeah. You're like, you know what? I want to see Infinity War. So, you go see Infinity War. All right? So, mm. boom, there's one. And then your buddy over there wants to go see Infinity War the next day. You give him mm. the movie pass. Boom. He goes and sees it. Mm. And then the next day, another friend wants to do You give him a movie pass. Boom. He goes and sees it the next day. Mm. You know, and basically... It just compounded it, and it got out of hand. Yeah. And it's just out of hand. That I understand. Yeah, I can yeah. sit there and say, okay, I get it now. I know why you're doing it. And I kind of agree with it. Uh, it sucks, but, you know, people yeah. are assholes and they're going to play the system. It is what it is. So. But see, they should have just did the take a picture of your ticket thing. Because then it would make sure that at least your friend's with you at the movie. Yeah, well. Like, mm. it's still dumb. I had to take a picture of my Incredible 2 ticket. Yeah. I didn't know which one to take a picture of. <laughs> so they got this long picture of me holding both of the things on my lap. I was like, I don't know which one's the ticket. You didn't email me, so I must have gave you the right one. <laughs> I haven't had to email anything yet, but I'm guessing the next movie I go to, I'll probably Oh, no, have it's, to. it's literally, like, right after. You know how you get, like, the... You've checked in and it gives you yeah. like the, you have to like to go on to leave that screen. You have to take a picture. Oh really? Yeah. Like it, it gives you the option to like take a picture now, or mm. I don't have my ticket or some shit like that. Oh okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't had to deal with it yet, but I'm guessing next movie I go see, Probably. which I'm, might be tomorrow. Uh, I mean, they give you a heads up. They give you an email. Okay. So I mean, hmm, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Still with the non geek news. Shining sequel. Ewan McGregor is set to play Danny Torrance, the little kid from The Shining, or as I like to type it, The Shining, in the upcoming yeah, sequel. Yeah, I, I was hoping that no wasn't a typo. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, it was a typo. Um, the Shining. The Shining. <laughs> Shining sequel. But yes, we're getting a sequel to The Shining, the a sequel that nobody asked for that I don't really think we need. Like, sometimes yeah. I can understand, like, yeah, we could use a sequel. Yeah, it'd be cool See, to have we, a sequel. But we need a Dark Tower. Like rehash the first Dark Tower, please. Yeah, but that's the story that a, needs a sequel sequels. to The Shining. I, I don't know, but I mean, the book was good. I forget the name of the book though. Like there is a legitimate sequel to this to The Shining. Really, but I forget the name of the book. But uh, it's a really good book. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Time Warner and AT and T. Now, everybody has been talking about the Fox, <laughs> Disney, Comcast thing that may, mm. and because of that, everybody may have forgotten about this deal that has been going on for the past year or so. Uh, now, this past week, the U.S. court decided to approve the merger of AT&T and Time Warner. This isn't just a merger of two cable companies, as you would first think. The deal brings together AT&T Wireless, DirecTV, Uverse, HBO, Warner Brothers, and the Turner Networks, including CNN. It gives the new AT&T control of both the pipes, the pipes? The pipes, yeah, both the pipes, and some of the media content that flows through them. Huh, I get it now. Pipes flows through them. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that means even the DC universe could be impacted with this and could mean changes coming sooner rather than later. Now, what this really means is the Fox deal that is currently you know, going on with Comcast and or Disney will most likely have less obstacles to get by for that sale to go through. Uh, once they decide who and when they are selling, so uh, some interesting things happened. Honestly, I'm gonna I was gonna bring it up, but uh, later in this. But with the Time Warner AT and T thing, uh, yes, the DC universe could be impacted. There was even somebody who like tweeted out to AT and T like, "Hey, what about the Snyder cut?" And they're like, "We'll get to that eventually," you know, or something like that. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah, I mean, they so. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there, but we know a lot of DC changes are coming, and I have stuff about that later on. Nice. Um, I'm going to get a little real here. Whoa. Hold on. Hold on, man. Let me pull up my big boy pants. We're getting super real. Um, now, obviously in Hollywood the past year It's not and cool half, to rape. <laughs> like just... Yeah. I mean, we've been getting a whole bunch of sexual abuse allegations in the world of entertainment. Like crazy. You know, you had the Kevin Spacey stuff, you know, the... Um, 
Robert Slovinsky stuff. No. No. Um, no. I, I, I can't think of uh, there. There's been a shit ton though. You um, know that um, one dude, Danny Masterson from uh, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Yeah. I mean, there's so many, and that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg there. Uh, but this past week, <laughs> some may say it's the tip of the dick. <laughs> this past week, Chris Hardwick, the host of Talking Dead. Uh, and the show on, I guess, NBC called The Wall. Uh, Chris Hardwick was accused of mental and physical abuse along with sexual abuse allegations by ex-girlfriend Chloe Dykstra. Now, Chloe Dykstra is a model slash like host of different shows on the internet, not on TV. She's on not a internet. famous person yet. She's not famous. Well, now she's going to be famous because yeah, of this. For the wrong reasons. Uh, now... Before I get more into this, Hardwick did have a response, and it was pretty quickly that he responded. Within a day, he came out mm. with a response. And this is what he said, and I think it's really important that, that you everybody hear this. Uh, These are very serious allegations and not to be taken lightly, which is why I've taken the day to consider how to respond. I was heartbroken to read Chloe's post. Our three-year relationship was not perfect. We were ultimately not a good match and argued, even shouted at each other. But I loved her and did my best to uplift and support her as a partner and companion in any way and at no time did I sexually assault her. When we were living together, I found out that Chloe had cheated on me and I ended the relationship. For several weeks after we broke up, she asked to get back together with me and even told me she wanted to have kids with me, build a life with, uh, build a life with me and told me that I was the one, but I did not want to be with someone who was unfaithful. I'm devastated to read that she is now accusing me of conduct that did not occur. I was blindsided by her post and always wanted uh, bleh, always wanted the best for her. As a husband, a son, and future father, I do not condone any kind of mistreatment of women. So that was the response of Chris Hardwick. Now, I want to get this out of the way really quickly. I'm not a huge Chris Hardwick fan. Mm. I mean, yeah, when I was... Yeah, he's known for like one thing. When I was really into The Walking Dead, you know, yeah, I think he did, does a fine job on mm. The Talking Dead. I do listen to uh, his ID10T, um, mm. his podcast, which started as The Nerdist. Um, I watched At Midnight, you know, so there was a lot of stuff that I watched and, and saw him on, but it wasn't because of him. It was because of... Just the out, outlet. Yeah, outlet. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it was just that he was the one doing it, you know? Yeah. It wasn't because of him. I'm, again, I'm not sitting here saying I hate Chris Hardwick or anything like that. It's far <laughs> you, from the truth, you're, but... You're a uh, man about him. Yeah, I just... it is He is what he is. So... Uh, some things obviously came about after this, after all this happened. Now, the Nerdist, which he was a founder of the company, has completely distanced themselves from Chris Hardwick, taking him off of their website, taking him off of everything. Any connection to Chris Hardwick has been removed from the Nerdist. AMC was getting a lot of flack, and because of that, uh, they have distanced themselves as well. And they have removed his talk show, talk, Talking with Chris Hardwick, uh, from their channel lineup. They have halted production and, and stuff on The Talking Dead. And he also, but this was his choice from what I've read, he mm -hmm. decided to step away from being uh, the panel host of San Diego Comic-Con. I think he had two mm -hmm. or three that he was going to be hosting or monitoring or whatever they call it at, at Comic-Con. Uh, so he stepped away from there. So within the span of three days, because this was all in three or four days, most four days. Yeah. Person comes out and says, I was sexually abused, sexually mistreated, blah, 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 by my ex-boyfriend. Mm. The next day, companies are distancing themselves from yeah. him completely. Within four days, he's basically out of a job. Yeah, his life's in shambles. Okay, so here's my thing. Again, I'm not sitting here saying that I am a big Chris Hardwick fan. But when did it come to this? These are allegations. Now, she is stating that she has proof, but has yet to show any proof of any of this. Any of it. There's, she has not shown any proof. And I'm not mm. saying that she's lying. I'm not saying that There's at all. There's a good 85% chance she is. I'm, and again, I'm not saying she I'll is. Say and, and, and I believe that women have the right to... Like, that's the whole, that was the whole Me Too movement thing. Mm. You know, it was... They, women need to feel empowered. They need to not be afraid to stand up and talk about these types of things. But this was my concern... From the yeah. very beginning, and I brought it up on our show. It's to the point where people were going to come out of the woodwork and say, we were in a bad relationship, but you know what? I want to screw him over because... Basically. And, and that's what this seems like. 
That that's literally what it is. And, and, and I and again, I'm not saying she's lying. I'm mm. not. I'm just saying what I see from what I've read and seen so far. It just seems that she's upset because her career isn't taking off like it should be. Mm. Uh, she's upset because obviously he's more successful than her. Yeah. He's married. He's he's his wife's pregnant. They're having a kid. Mm. Everything that she supposedly wanted with him. Yeah. Okay? His life's coming together and hers is falling apart. It, exactly. I've been in relationships like this. Like, luckily, I'm not a big star. But mm. I've been in relationships where after you break up, a month, years even down the line... Women just do shit to the, do shit. Yes, they, that she has come back and she has tried to start shit with me. It happens. Again, mm. I'm not saying she's lying. Maybe there was something. Maybe it's misconstrued. Obviously, Chris Hardwick is admitting to the relationship being unhealthy. Yeah. All right, he, which is something most stars don't do when they are accused of exactly. Of whatever. You know, he's he's stating, and another thing that people need to remember: Chris Hardwick was an alcoholic. Mm. Okay, so there's some things that could have happened during his alcoholism that yeah, that, that could be part could, of this. He doesn't remember it, it, exactly. Again, I don't know where his alcoholism you know ended and where this his, this relationship stood within all of that. He could have you know been done with alcohol before it or it was after. Yeah. I don't I don't know exactly. He might start it again but, after this. Chris Hardwick has always been open about his life. That mm -hmm. is another thing. Like, you know, this whole alcoholism thing. Like, he has openly talked about it, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. He's not somebody who who, who hides away and, and, and tries to hide his life. So that's another reason why I sit here and believe Chris Hardwick when he says, you know, I, I, this isn't what happened, yeah. you know? So my problem here is, why is it okay for companies to just say, you know what, even though there's no proof, even though we have nothing, no more. Yeah. You're done. Like that's and just then wrong. In, and then in three years, when she's like, "Yeah, I lied," and he's like, "And he's yeah, his it's his too late. Pretty yeah. much over. Yeah, it, it's to me, it's not fair. No, to, not know, at all. I, and then especially when the woman faces nothing, yeah, nothing exactly at all. And again, I'm not sitting here trying to say you know any. Again, I am all for women standing up talking because yeah. I do not condone any of any kind of abuse to women or anything yeah. like that either. I do not. It is wrong. I believe they should be treated as equals. That kind of stuff. I, 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 I <laughs> I'm sorry. I do. Not, this isn't funny, but you said that, and this meme came to mind. I think I showed you with the two guys with lightsabers. He dude's a, a Jedi. He's like, all oh, women are queens. Oh, and yeah, the other guy yeah. comes out. If she breathes, she's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind. But, but oh my God. You know, again, I, I just think, in my, my the reason why I wanted to bring this up is Hollywood needs to be careful. You know, yeah, well, actually, I, not even Hollywood, the world. And the world. But right now, AMC has distanced themselves from Chris Hardwick. Now, does that mean they've canceled his show? No. Maybe they want to see what's going to come of it before they continue his show. Yeah. But even that, I think, is wrong. I think at this point in time, until there is proof, until yeah. it is 100% certain that he did these acts and, and mistreated you know, Chloe and you know, sexually yeah, assaulted did. her, whatever. He did some shit. I, I think it should be business as always. Mm -hmm. You know, they should come out and AMC should have the balls to sit there and say, look, we stand behind our man until we we are yeah. proven, uh, until there's proof of otherwise, yeah. you know, too. You know, NBC should do the same. All of that. I can understand him wanting to step down from Comic-Con. Yeah. That's fine. That's If that was his decision, I'm fine with that. I understand. Uh, but again, if, if it wasn't his decision, yeah, Comic-Con should stand. And that's what the companies need to start doing. I get that this whole thing, because it's so fresh right now in everybody's mm. mind with everything that's going on the last year that you know they want to distance themselves from this kind of stuff but you gotta give your your people who are who are your employees the benefit yeah. of the doubt sometimes yeah and that's what i think they're not doing they're not doing that and, and i feel bad look i'm not saying i don't feel i don't feel bad for chloe if the stuff is true yeah. if it's true yes i feel bad for her but I do feel bad for Chris Hardwick right now because his career is on hold. It is at a halt. He's and gotten, could potentially be over. It could potentially be over because we still don't have that proof. If, mm. if if by the time I'm done recording this and proof comes up, I apologize for all we of this. We get the full but, porn out. I'd be like, whoa. But again, as at this point, as we are sitting here recording, there has been no proof of any of these allegations. And mm. somebody's career could potentially be over from it. And yeah. I just think it's wrong. I just Because do. someone got salty. Exactly. See, that's that's what's wrong with the world. I, 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 <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I just uh, it just angered me whenever whenever I saw this come up. At first, I was like, "Holy shit, Chris Hardwick!" Like mm -hmm. you wouldn't expect yeah. it. 
but you would never have expected Bill Cosby either, you know? Yeah. Well. <laughs> so. <laughs> but, <and bops. laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, again, you know, you wouldn't expect Chris Hartwick. And yeah, no, I wouldn't. When I read him. it, I sat there and said, hmm, interesting. There's still nothing there. Yeah. You know? like, so, but we'll women. see. Women. Yeah, we'll, women. We'll, we'll see what happens from there. And, you know, I'll talk about it again. And I will, uh, you know, gladly say if she shows the proof, I will gladly, you know, call Chris Hardwick out on it. You know, yeah. if she shows proof. I, I have no problem Look, doing that. We need a political podcast so, so we can talk about this in depth. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to video game news. Um, wow. So Sony and Nintendo, um, as well as, uh, I believe, um, who does... Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. They all had their shows after we recorded <laughs> that was last really week. Bad. I couldn't remember. Actually, uh, Ubisoft was going on while we while were recording. Yeah. Uh, but there was, you know, a bunch of other stuff that came up. Uh, Sony's side, the big thing was Last of Us Two. Sony's was so awful. Um, but it was, I mean, really, that's all they showed was Last of Us Two. Like, Sony, I mean, they showed a bunch of other stuff, but yeah, but the like, big thing they was... they sunk all their money into Last of Us Two. Uh, Nintendo, believe it or not, Nintendo's stock price plummeted after their E3 pro- see, presentation. I don't, I don't see how. I, I like their. With the exception of Super Smash Brothers, they had nothing. But like, neither did Sony. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I, I would prefer Smash Brothers over Last of Us Two, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, Nintendo. Here's the th- here's the problem with Nintendo. They could, just don't could know we what they're see, doing. Could we see a time where Nintendo goes out of business? I, I've been saying, when did I say last year, the year before? I said, look, what they need to do is stop making consoles and just make games. Yeah. Do go the Sega route. But what's surprising is they even announced Fortnite for the, for Switch. the Switch. But again, that's not big news. And like that, I mean, that for- brought millions of people. I mean, Fortnite is Fortnite. You know, people who yeah. want to play Fortnite probably are playing it on their Xbox or PlayStation now. They're not yeah. going to care about getting it on their Switch. But what are you going to do when you leave your house and you got to go on a plane or something? Okay, take your Switch. Exactly. Gotcha. That's something the games, the Xbox and Playstations can't do. As of right now, you're right. You're That's right. why I was like, I, I don't understand. No one just likes Nintendo anymore. <laughs> no, because they're so gimmicky. Yeah, you know, like they 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 look for the next gimmick. And like I said, my my belief is portable home console gaming is the future of mm. console gaming. Which they did right Switches, with the Switch. Switch, and it's not a hundred percent yet, but it's a stepping stone. Yeah. You know, they started with the Wii U, Switch is mm-hmm. the next step with it, and now they can get to continue. They got to push mm. it. They have to they have to really focus on that that concept and that idea of, look, you can play this over here, not from home with your friends yeah. over there that are over there. And you just don't like you even would. need a TV. Yeah, exactly. Just like you would play Halo on your Xbox, you mm. know, over Xbox Live. They need to come up with a Nintendo Live and really push that. You know, I mean, they yeah. do have the network and stuff, kind the Nintendo of. network, but it's not as good as Xbox Live. It's not good, period. It, but that's what they need to do. They yeah. need to focus on that aspect of it. And uh, obviously the games. You know, mm. we still... They're still... They, they gear themselves way towards kids way too much. I mean, they've, that's... But, but, but that, I mean, that's time. Nintendo. But, but if you, you think about it, they kind of shot their load pretty quickly with with Mario same. and Zelda same like almost immediately at the launch of the Switch yeah you know well, now the Zelda lot. the Zelda is technically a Wii title that was ported to the Switch yeah because um, it did come out on uh, the Wii, Wii U first uh, but uh, Super Odyssey. Mario Odyssey uh, that was a Switch game mm-hmm. um you know, they came out, they didn't make a new Mario Kart, which is good. I think that they should make a new Mario Kart mm. sooner, but they need to get back to their roots. The last one, Mario yeah. Kart 8, was not great. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot that they could do. Smash Brothers is definitely in the right direction, but there's there's still one. They're way. missing one character in Smash Brothers, though. What's that? Waluigi. Everybody's here except for Waluigi. That's weird. He, he's the only Nintendo character that's not in that game. That's bizarre. They even brought Ridley. <laughs> that's bizarre. That's bizarre. Uh, is and it... no Goku. Oh, jeez. Oh, Damn it, Japan. Uh, but <laughs> honestly, they should figure out a way to get Pokemon Go on the Switch. They they have po- two Pokemon games that are like the like the handheld ones yeah. coming to the Switch. But kind of. Yeah. It's a dry run of it, but it still. Yeah, but they need to do something with that. I think Nintendo. That's what that's what'll help Nintendo. They're, they're starting to get there. Sony starting. rumor has it that their next console is going to release in 2020. 
so we'll yeah isn't xbox that. i think i should yeah xbox is releasing in 2020 ish yeah or something, something around there that's the plan is 2020 for the next gen or next gen and possibly last gen that they're which saying. is crazy i remember when the xbox one came out yeah. like it was yesterday <laughs> Holy shit, uh, Stranger like Things, we're going to be getting a Telltale video game. Ugh. I hate Telltale games. They're so bad. They're so bad. I like them. So bad. I like them. Bad. I like them. Camera angles are shit. I'll give you that. <laughs> They're really yeah. bad with the camera angles. I game like the, play is ass. I like story. Yeah, story, read a book. Read I do that. Book, read a book, read a motherfucking book. I do that already. Sometimes I'm lazy, and I like to not think about it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's punch it, Chewy. Uh, Fuck! Uh, that's not what that means. Damn it, sorry. George Lucas, during the show oh, James Cameron's Story of Science Fiction on AMC, George Lucas discussed what you, some of you his You pronounce ideas... gl wrong. George Lucas discussed what some of his ideas were for his Star Wars sequel trilogy. He goes, we're going to get into a micro microbiotic world. But there's this world of creatures that operate differently than we do. I call them the wills. And the wills are the ones who actually control the universe. They feed off the force. Of course, a lot of the fans would have hated it, just like they did Phantom Menace and everything. But at least the whole story from be beginning to end would be told. So that was George Lucas's plan for the, the sequel trilogy, uh, was to explore more of the force and especially essentially metachlorians and everything like that to understand and expand that side and aspect of things i like now, that idea but i'd have to see a script first now the way that i think it would have worked oh. is it would have been the training of the the children of yeah. the skywalker and solo children. like more more like the eu exactly i think it would have played out a little more like the eu you know with jaina and and, and Jason, and Jason which Solo becomes Darth, stuff like that. And Darth something. Yeah, but again, I think that's kind of how it maybe hmm. would have played out. Oh, we would have got Lubaka. Maybe. Chewbacca's cousin. He's maybe. in those books. Yes, but maybe we may not have. We don't know. I wish we would have got Lubaka. That's a cool-ass name, too. So, I, I don't know. I just think that's kind of... I like the concept, but like if it's any other... If, if it's how, he, how that was written... <laughs> I mean... I think it would have been fine. I, I, I would have. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would have owned it on DVD and, and watched it 10 million times. But mm. see, I, I think it sounds cool. Like, I think it, it can, from start to finish, I think it sounds amazing. Yeah. But, but like, I also like what we're getting. So, like, yeah. To me, it's like, it is what it is. Uh, it's like the equivalent of, like, the Zack Snyder cut in the Justice League. Like, we're getting what we got and we kind of like it, but we could have got something else. Yeah. And we could like it. Uh, Fuck it, release it. Disney has the power. Episode 9, rumor has it Billy D. Williams is going to return. Tits. So, uh, Which is weird. Eh, I mean, bring back Land... Or, yeah, bring back Land. <laughs> bring back Cloud City. Just him playing... Uh, Fuck. Um, Spock? Yeah, with, with a Han Solo. Like, Ghost. <laughs> uh, and then there was some interesting news coming out from a voice actor from Lucasfilm who's done voice acting in video games and TV mm -hmm. shows and stuff stating that there are nine Star Wars films in some sort of development right now. That's tits. Now, when I sit there and think about that, what could that mean? Now, we know that there's going to be an Obi-Wan film. That's one. All right. And uh, Boba, Boba Fett, Fett. That's two. All right. So there's and, and two nine. right there. And then episode nine, that's three. And then there's Ryan Johnson trilogy. That's six. And, and then, then the Game of Thrones Thrones. trilogy, that's nine. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Don't think it's all crazy fun and games. That's like, oh my god, we're getting a Yaddle movie. <laughs> <laughs> look, give me a Salacious Crumb movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, fuck it. <laughs> Bib Fortuna? Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Give, give me fucking uh, the Great Pit of Sar Scar uh, that, uh, The Sarlacc Pit. There we go. Yeah, well, why is calling them the Great Pit of something? Give me a Sarlacc Pit movie. Yeah. Get that Boba Fett climbing out of it, and it leads right into the Boba Fett movie. Jeez. That but, would be awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's what's going on with the Star Wars stuff. Cantina band movie. <laughs> It'd be fucking awesome. You could set it up like like a musical, like Rock of Ages style, and they're a traveling rock band. <laughs> and they hit rock bottom, and that's why they play in the cantina. <laughs> that I would fucking watch that. I would get behind that movie. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the multiverse here. Do, do. 
all things comics and geek going forward. Now, Power Rangers, Hasbro has completed its acquisition of the franchise. So Could probably, that mean more toys or TV shows? Probably all of the above. Yay! They're probably going to milk this more than Saban ever did. So God, I mean... Yeah. As long as it's not essentially the same episode every time, yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it. I'll go back I mean, and watch I'm Power not Rangers. Watching the show, I'll watch. But... I'll watch one episode of Power Rangers for it, and I'll be like, "Yep, this is exactly what it was in the '90s," <laughs> and then that's it. I, I tried to go back a while ago because on Netflix they had the original Mighty mm. Morphin Power Rangers. I tried to watch them, and it was just yeah. so difficult to it's, watch. It's them. rough. It's rough. It really is. Uh, but I loved it as a kid. Loved it every Dude, every Ivan every, News. every week every day. Ivan News, man. Yeah, that's the movie. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Dino Force. Uh, before we get into like the DC Marvelness of things, I have a question for you because I was going through Facebook today, and okay, uh, some cool. some saw something interesting pop up, and I, I wanted to bring it up to you because you're mm-hmm. big of a fan of this pop up as I am. Okay. Uh, Dragon Ball. Well, how would you feel if they decided to? All right. Let's say they finally officially state. All right. The canonical order of Dragon Ball is Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super. And that's where it ends. GT mm. is not in it. So let's just yeah. say GT's out of it, okay? How would you feel if they decided to spin off of that? So we get like a Trunks and Goten, you know, saga of some sort. Like where it's yeah, 120 like it's episodes of like Trunks and uh, Goten. And I wouldn't like say that. 100. I like, mean. Like without <coughs> Goku. Like how would you feel of I'd be okay a saga it. without Goku and even potentially without Vegeta? I'd be okay with it. See, I, I'm all for it. Now, if they would have like, done the it char- right. The characters are strong enough. See, if they would have done it right. It would have been awesome to continue with Gohan, but it's yeah. just he's just a pussy now. He's a punk. Yeah. So uh, Universal Tournament kind of saved him a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. But like, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I wouldn't say 120 episodes of just Goten and Trunks. Well, Give I me mean, like, it, would, it would have supporting yeah. characters. I'm not Give, just saying those two. Well, but, you know what I mean. Like, I don't like, think there's sh- like build up like. Think of it like this. Like, think like of build it, the universe a little bit? Like, yeah. So, you know, we get up to Super, and we know Goten and Trunks are, what are they, like 14? Not even 14. They're like 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, they're you know, doing they're like, something. They're like 10 years old. And let's just say their story branches off, and it's kind of like starting at Dragon Ball again, but these two. I can get behind you know? it. I can get behind it. And, I think I feel like then, they're strong enough to have something. And it could build into, you know, where they become, you know, teenagers, yeah. you know, kind of like how Goku was in Dragon Ball Z. Mm. And then, you know, it goes from there. Like, I, I think it would be kind of cool I can get behind that. it. And then we could see, like, a different, like, finally them grow up. Yeah. That yeah. would be tits. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, I think it would be cool. We could see a potential spinoff where we actually see future trunks become future trunks. Like, somehow a timeline fuck up yeah from right. all the time travel that they've done throughout the yeah. series <laughs> some sort of paradox happened and we see future trunks happen mm-hmm. i mean i'd be all for it like i totally would yeah you know and and what it would do is if they if they got good writing for it um obviously we know that the the two kids already can do super saiyan and uh, yeah and, and, stuff and like go that. tanks can go super saiyan 3 yeah, and stuff I, like that I, mean, I get that but <clears throat> they could still with good writing make it yeah. interesting and we and, can get a different fusion with the patara earrings yeah like, i mean there's so much that they could do um and i just think those are the two perfect characters to move on with mm-hmm. you know because they essentially are the then, vegeta and goku of yeah. of the of that you know at that point you can have goku show up occasionally you can have vegeta show up occasionally old yeah, men gohan show up eventually gohan sometimes <clears throat> you know? and then you can introduce pan and it'd be kind of relevant pan yeah yeah exactly because there's only a 10 year gap yeah I, I i just think it'd be i cool. can get behind it yeah and then you could show abula yeah abula because you know 10 year gap there too yeah like know? she could be old enough I mean, she doesn't necessarily need to have powers, but she could be the Bulma of the series. Yeah. Or the Saga or whatever. Exactly. Whatever they, I mean, I can get behind it. It, it just, I think it, it, those two characters, I'm not saying they deserve it, but it would be, they would be the two best and they could make yeah. them deserving if they have the right kind of writing. Yeah. And kind of just do spin off sagas for everybody. Give yeah. Piccolo his own fucking saga again. Yeah. Not the evil King Piccolo, though. I'm not saying, like, uh, I think all of the older characters mm-hmm. i think that their stories are pretty good and and they could even wrap up like I, I still think that we should get one more saga of our main characters like i still yeah. think that we should still see goku vegeta piccolo like i want to see their stories completely wrap up once yeah. and for all like they did a good job with vegeta and goku at the end of super yeah but 
it, I could I want more from Piccolo and and even all yeah. the old Z fighters, you know, like yeah, all like of they that, aren't like, relevant at all anymore. Yeah, though, but it'd be cool to see like what they're doing. Like we know yeah. Krillin has his family. We know, you know, the androids are doing their thing. Yeah, like yeah, we ha- we know what's that, Tn doing. But, yeah, what's Tn doing? What's Yamcha doing? You know, is yeah. Yamcha <laughs> trying to play baseball again or what? You know, <laughs> Yamcha's alive. <laughs> <laughs> Yamcha did get hit in the head with the baseball, just die, yeah. like explode. But uh, uh, that's I, I mean, I could get behind it. I would get behind it. And even introduce with well that new Saiyan that we're getting in that movie next year. Mm-hmm. You can build something off with him too. Training yeah. Trunks and Pic- or, yeah, Trunks and Piccolo, Trunks and Goten. Yeah, you know, be cool. Maybe he has a he has the ability to to ascend, yeah, know, Super Saiyan Blue or something like that. And yeah, he, and that's what you know it leads them. Kill off Goku once and for all, maybe just so we don't see him again, or you know, yeah. like do something. In that. Have Vegeta and Goku like turn Vegeta evil again. You did Majin Vegeta. Uh, I, I think I, we're, mean, I think we're past the evil Vegeta, but uh, I think you could do something where yeah. they go off and fight, and that's how they die. I they just, fight to the death. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. That's like how they, you write them off. But like maybe even even like develop the universe where people now know these fighters and who they are. Yeah, because like, even to this point, people still don't know. Yeah, like how do you not recognize this at this point? Yeah, like, but like even like make the the world, you know, the Earth of of Dragon Ball, like realize like there are these special warriors mm-hmm. and have it where they had to save the world, but they they died doing it. Yeah, but they are now celebrated yearly, you know, mm-hmm. and go ten, go ten, yeah, go ten, and, and Trunks have to live up to their father's names now and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down and then we that. can see another final flash versus Kamehameha. Com- uh, competition again yeah and and that and they push each other to be better just mm-hmm. like goku and vegeta push each other to be better like mm-hmm. again you see it, it could yeah. work i think it really could really work i just and then i'm sure piccolo would eventually die yeah. oh no piccolo would become kami and just do yeah. what kami did yeah you'd kind of have more dende in it too because yeah. I, I think he was shortchanged also like once yeah. he took over yeah he the, was like not not relevant yeah like he just became he's nothing. like i just made the earth's dragon balls pretty cool but you know whatever like he had a little bit of a role in the boo saga and yeah. that's pretty much it <laughs> so i don't know that's just my opinion on everything uh, let's see. Uh, DC. So we're going to go with DC and Whoa! God, do I have a lot of DC Whoa. stuff here. All right. Uh, start off. Now, last week, uh, while we were, uh, recording, uh, news came out about Jeff Johns. Now, Mr. Johns has left the role as DC chief creative officer and will now be working closely with Warner brothers, writing and producing the upcoming green lantern core film. Now, Yay. Jeff Johns was the one who was the guy who pushed for DC Rebirth. Those comics, that's mm-hmm. all Jeff Johns. Like, that is him. Like, is his know, brother Jimmy Johns? No. Damn it. He also was really big with the New 52. Now, what he has done comic-wise is phenomenal. Uh, he's just so brilliant when it comes to the DC Universe. So him moving to uh, a writing and producing role for a film, I think that's the next logical thing for him. I think he's been wanting to get into films because he mm-hmm. was... He did play, you know, he's a he was a producer on Justice League and Man of Steel mm. and Batman v Superman. Also, he is a huge producing uh, or a producer on the Arrowverse. So mm-hmm. Arrow, the Flash. That so kind of he stuff. knows what he's doing. So I think this is just For the, the most next. Part. The next thing is because he's written a few Flash episodes. You know, he's mm-hmm. producer. He wants to write now for a movie. Makes sense. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if at some point he became a director within the DC universe. Yeah. I, I think it's a good idea. I am a little bit worried just because of. A lot of what I've heard, and it's just rumor, but from Justice League, uh, a lot of the things that I didn't like with the movie seem mm. to be from his mind. Ah. So that's kind of my worry. But, uh, again, it's rumor. Like, who knows what yeah. it really is. You know, it could have been Josh Whedon. It could have just been Johns at that point. Like, well, I let Zack Snyder go, and we got Whedon, so we just have to go with it. So, yeah, that's good. You yeah, know? whatever, man. So that's what it could have been. Uh, but... Jim Lee will be replacing him now. Jim Lee is a huge comic book artist and, you know, comic book writer. Uh, he has uh, done stuff, you know, he played a huge role in the late 80s and early 90s with Marvel Comics. And then in the mid to late 2000s, he worked brilliantly with DC, uh, most notably on the Batman run Hush. Uh, so, that was a good run. Yeah. So, you know, he's he's huge in the comic book world. Uh, so, yeah, he's taken over as the DC Chief Creative Officer. So, assistant to the officer. I'm the new officer. <laughs> uh, now, 
on nerdtalkalipspodcast.com. <gasps> Go here and read this article because it's really interesting. The DCEU is going to be split. So, um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to read it. Just, okay, I'll, I'll fill the time. How are, how are you guys doing today? Uh, we're talking about DC and stuff, so I hope you're interested. <laughs> I hope I'm not creeping you out. Mm. You smell different when you're awake. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, well, don't worry. I don't smell you while you're awake. You, you don't? Just while you're asleep. Um. So... Hold on. What there. kind of, what kind of bees are the scariest? All right, so I'm boobies. Uh, so nerdtalklipspodcast dot com. Warner Brothers split splits DC films and gives us an Elseworlds style film division. Enter the multiverse. <gasps> so one DC movie universe? Question mark. No, two DC brands on the big screen. Warner Brothers has decided to take the superhero movie genre in a new direction with a second brand separate from the DC EU. It's going to be called either DC Dark or DC Black. Whatever it may be, <laughs> DC Black. Whatever it may be that WB decides to call it, uh, is heading our way. The idea behind starting up a DC film sub franchise is to allow room for directors to come in and make one off DC films. This will allow films to be made that do not stick to the continuity of the larger DCEU. This is a great con- this is great considering that DC has reportedly six Joker movies in some stage of development, which I still think that number is wrong. But, Jesus Christ! Um, not saying that that. You know, whoever wrote this is wrong. I'm just saying that I don't think that... I think that information is incorrect. Uh, With the announcement comes the news that the Yaqueen Phoenix-led Joker film, rumored to be inspired by The Killing Joke, would be the first movie under the DC Black Slash Dark label. So that's what's going on in the DC universe, or DC films. Uh, It looks like we're going to have two universes, which I am all for. I've been been saying they need to do this with Marvel. I think Mm. it's a great idea. Because at some point you can you can't even have crossovers and stuff like that even you know but giving directors the ability to go out that's why the DC mm. animated films have been so successful because they're not following any single continuity they're yeah like they're giving, just doing their own thing they're doing their own thing but brilliantly and they're so good this will do that now yes that Todd Phillips I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call it the Aquaman Phoenix Joker film because it has still not been confirmed that he is going to be the Joker. It's still rumored. There has been no confirmation that he is the Joker in that movie. I don't but, think we need six Joker uh, movies. But the Todd Phillips Joker movie, uh, yeah, I, that's where that's going to fall under. You mm. know, uh, I, I just think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, it I plays. Think why not? In, it plays more closely to comics. Like there's 17 iterations of the Joker in comics. Yeah, exactly. I mean, don't quote me, but you know what I mean. But you know, I know it's exactly what like you're talking there's, about. There's how many Batman in the movie? Yeah, like right now in in, in uh, the DC Universe Rebirth series, like the, yeah. the that there's three Jokers right now. Yeah, you like, know, like and we still don't know. I, actually, as I don't know if the issue came out, but there's an upcoming issue coming out that's finally going to explain: Are these actually three Jokers who've been terrorizing Batman for all these years? Yeah, or, or is, is it, it some kind of multiverse crossover that yeah. caused these three to come together? And then that's when you can do like giant ass crossovers when like you're like, oh, let's fucking mend the multiverse. Who yeah. cares? Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would totally be behind a Bat Who Smiles movie. I, I fucking I, love that I movie. Think it, I, I think line. it's all a great idea uh, because you can then take the ideas of you know the Dark Knight Return or yeah Returns and do live action of it for once. You yeah. know, get you know people have always said, who wouldn't we love to see a Clint Eastwood Batman? Well, there you go. You can have your yeah, old boom. old man Clint Eastwood Batman right there. Uh, you know, yeah, just that kind of stuff. Like I, I think it's brilliant. I and, think it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. And then you could do a Flashpoint movie and it make complete sense. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Like <laughs> exactly. exactly. Feel like so, it all it all flows. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. A uh, concept artist from Justice League claims that Snyder shot his movie and only the special effects and the planned reshoots were needed to finish the film. Now, this goes on to say, because, you know, people are asking, where's well, the Zack Snyder cut? Uh, which I'm still, I want yeah. the Zack Snyder cut. Uh, essentially, what this is, is going on, there's like Twitter conversation between like two people connected to Justice League and Zack Snyder. Uh, you know, essentially, this is what I've got from it all. Zack Snyder, when he shoots a movie, he has a plan. He shoots his movie, okay? He does not create his movie in the editing room. No. He makes his movie very meticulously and shoots the movie yeah. as it is. And you can see that in Man of Steel and Batman versus, mm. versus Superman. You know how meticulous things are because there are so many nods and callbacks and, and references and stuff like that within those movies that 
you can't do on you the can't cutting do floor. on an editing yeah a cutting room floor you know throwing stuff in the cutting room floor so that makes sense like I understand mm. that's how Zack Snyder works so they were saying that he put together a cut of the movie mm-hmm. with without all the special effects completed and there were still some planned reshoots that were going to take place yeah so there's a there's a a, a visible movie yes there I mean there's potentially a, a Zack Snyder movie. cut out there. Uh, I, I read an article today, you know, some guy uh, wrote an article, um, it's some blog, really, and he's just saying, you know, this is why we don't need one. You know, think about it. Right now, the DC, people are once again excited for the DC EU or whatever you want to call it, yeah. the Cinematic Universe. Wonder Woman 84 looks fantastic. We're getting so many behind-the-scenes pictures the and stuff like that. Stuff that just dropped today? Yes, and it is not the Invisible Jet. But It's it's her sitting in air. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think it was them having fun. I don't think they were actually filming at the time. I think they were like testing some things, but people I mean, were thinking otherwise. But You never know. Um, again, we're getting so much with Wonder Woman. We got all of those amazing pictures of Aquaman. Yeah. It, does that not look beautiful? That movie looks phenomenal. So we've Wow, got, that comes out December. Yeah. Oh my so God, that's only a couple months away. We've got all of this going for us right now for the DC EU. Uh, and people are excited. Mm. So this guy goes, why would they want to reopen an old wound? You mm. know, Justice League was not regarded as a good movie by many people. So by them coming out and saying, here's the Zack Snyder cut, they're reopening a wound for people to go, well, that movie sucked too, so you guys screwed up even more. You know, like, mm. the, that's, so, I, like I said a while ago, I don't think we're going to get a Zack Snyder cut now. Yeah. Ten maybe years? Like, maybe. Five yeah. years? Maybe. But not now. Not while they're still trying to right the ship. And also, you got to remember, Zack Snyder had a vision. He was originally going to do two Justice League movies. So his script, his movie, was mm. to lead into Justice League 2. Yeah. So there would have been a lot of references to Dark Side, to other things that would mm. have led into a second Justice League that just isn't going to be there now. Yeah. So you can't release that and say, here's this. Um, I, I still think that I personally I don't care. I want to see it. If they release it today, I'm yeah. I'm smart enough to uh, tell the difference. Tell the difference. Or guess what? We got this DC dark or yeah, DC this black. Multi, this multiverse theory. Just say hey, this is our first title out under that label. Yeah. Boom. It's the what if scenario. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Why comics not? do it all the goddamn time. Like I, I but again, I, I would love to see it. Uh, and it's out there. You know, this is just going to add more fuel to the fire. More people are going to be demanding it. But mm-hmm. it's out there. It is out there. See, I don't think Marvel could pull it off at this point, though. Marvel? They're too, yeah, they're too far down there. Like, well, oh, with the multiverse cont- idea? Yeah, they're too far down their continuity How did you, thing. Like, you, you're like 10 minutes behind us here. Because uh, my brain's <laughs> working in weird ways, man. My brain works. Uh, Todd Phillips, the Joker movie, which we talked a little bit ago, seems to, to be that it's going to be shot in New York. Most of it's going to be shot in New York, and it's going to start cool. shooting in September. Cool. Uh, Henry Cavill is apparently preparing for his next appearance as Superman. He posted something on Instagram. Did he growl at the mustache? No. Damn it. Uh, with him working out, and he was talking about his buns of steel or something. I don't know. But uh, he was talking about, you know, if people vote for him, you could see him in uh, in the, the blue suit sooner mm-hmm. rather than later. So he's kind of hinting that we're going to see Superman sooner rather than yeah. later. Personally, I think it's... One, I think we're going to get Man of Steel 2 um, announced at, at Comic-Con this year, but I also think that he's going to be in Shazam. I do. I think he'll be in Shazam. Yeah. Even if it's a short little cameo of like a minute or two, mm. he's going to be there, and we're going to see him there as well. So that's just my yeah. my belief. Uh, Wonder Woman with production in full swing on Wonder Woman 84. It seems we're getting set photos and even some information on the film. Chris Pine is absolutely playing a role in the movie, as he has been seen on set in a few pictures. But is he playing Steve Trevor? Uh, since I typed this up, it seems like he was confirmed as playing Steve Trevor. Yeah. So I, I I'm I, interested. I'm yeah. interested how they're going to rewrite that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I unless they're completely rehashing everything that we yeah. got from the DCU as the multiverse. Yeah. And at it was that actually. Point. Patty Jenkins when she released the first official image of Chris Pine because we got some unofficial images yeah. but the first official image of Chris Pine in the movie was by Patty Jenkins on Twitter and she goes so happy to see Chris Pine back as Steve mm. Trevor like that's how she put something like that yeah so she's confirming it's Steve Trevor yeah so but like <laughs> that's some thick plot armor he well, has yeah on. we'll see what happens he blew off <laughs> he blew the fuck up <laughs> like 
you don't come back from that easily. It could be something like, could she be seeing him? Yeah, hallucinations, hallucinations and shit. That, yeah, I mean, who knows? Uh, some potential info was leaked on Kristen Wiig's character, Cheetah. It would seem she may be a friend of Diana's prior to becoming evil, which is <gasps> which is kind of an interesting uh, idea when it comes to villains in comic book movies in this, this day and age, uh, because we haven't seen that. Like, think back to all of our movies mm-hmm. that we've gotten, Marvel or DC. The villain is always the villain from the start of the movie. Yeah. We never see them become the villain from the standpoint of being friends. Like I'm yeah. trying to think of Marvel movies and say the closest one would have been black Panther. Yeah. But that even then that, that would have been a stretch, but he was, he had his evil plans from the beginning, yeah. you know? So that, that's just like, you know, my thing, like, okay, yeah, you can sit there and say Iron Man one with Sebastian Stan. Like he was mm. kind of, you know, the partner with Tony Stark, but his evil plan was in the beginning of the movie. He tried to kill Tony Stark, you know, like, yeah. He was evil the whole time. They weren't actual friends. I think this oh, is... They're going to start out where they're actually friends. I'm going to give you a Marvel answer. Captain America and Iron Man and Civil War. Yeah, leave. <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist. I also... Yeah, there was also some leaked photos of Kristen Wiig on the set of Wonder Woman 84 looking very 80s-ish. So that we still I, I, like, I really what... like the name of that. Like Wonder Woman eighty four. I hope they keep like, the name. Like, like that, name. that re- really just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. It just sounds nice. I think it does sound good. I like, I like the name. I do. I, I do. I like I, that. Whether it's just a, their production name or what, I, yeah. I think it should stick. Personally. You hear us, DC? Just fucking keep it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she looks Chris and Wiggs' character. Just she was wearing very eighties clothing. Mm, That's probably all. Probably had you know. a fro. Um, no, big hair, not a fro, but big Damn hair. It. Uh, so Dolly yeah. Parton hair. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I I'm still interested to see what what concept they go with cheetah mm-hmm. you know is she going to be cgi is she going to just be a woman in a cat suit like how are they going to go you know yeah. still not sure where they're going to go there but i'm interested uh batman matt reeves is moving for moving forward with a younger batman bruce wayne for his movie we talked about this a little bit last week uh you know rumor has it that ben affleck is out although there could potentially be some room for that still because if they continue with justice league 2 and stuff maybe this is how they're going to do it i i think it's not a bad idea but um, keep Affleck. Have two bat two guys playing Batman. Why not? Yeah. You know, keep you Affleck are... to do the the Justice League twos to show up in these yeah. later films, and then recast a younger Batman to do his backstory to find out yeah, what Batman was sense. doing prior to Batman vs Superman. Why yeah. not? Have who cares if it's two actors? Just have fun with it. Go all out. Do something different, and that's what I want to see. <clears throat> Multiverse. <laughs> In this case, you wouldn't even need a multiverse. Yeah. You could connect it still, you know? Because, I mean, there would be enough of a gauge gap. Exactly. I mean, you could you could essentially go say, all right, this is 20 years. This is when Batman, Bruce Wayne, was 20 years old. You know, mm. we, Bruce Wayne is in his 40s and Batman for Superman and Justice League. Let's see him when he was in his 20s. Yeah, and then and you can that. run it up to he is like 30, exactly. five or you could, something you could like do that. Th- you could do a trilogy of young Batman movies and see what's going on and, and how he becomes the man we see in the beginning of Batman for Superman. You yeah. could do that. I would be all for it. I would be all for it. Just watch his parents die for the fourteen thousandth time. We don't. I don't think we would need to see that. You know they would do it. They though. would probably do it, but you I don't think we would. need to. Uh, Flash is going to apparently have a sort of Back to the Future feel to it. That's pretty much the only information that's come out. I was, was going to say that's <laughs> is that it. So that's pretty much all I've gotten. I can't really have much to say. Uh, Aquaman. We've gotten a plethora of new picks from the upcoming James Wan film in Entertainment Weekly and. James Wan has confirmed that we will get our first trailer at San Diego Comic Con 2018. So that's about two weeks, three two, weeks, two and a half weeks from now, I think. Two and a half, three weeks from now, yeah. So very soon, very very soon. Um, I, I think that's all for DC. Like I said, we had a shit ton of DC stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marvel. All right. Fox. The, the whole thing going on, and I, I put this with the Marvel stuff because this is what people care most about the Fox deal. With When it comes mm. to the Fox deal, people only care about the Marvel characters. That's why I put it here. So the Fox ordeal seems to be getting crazier and crazier. Disney originally submitted an offer to buy Fox for $52.4 billion, all stock offer. Now, this past week, Comcast offered $65 billion all cash. God damn, Comcast is going for broke. So, <laughs> like, they're go- Comcast is going to get the Marvel characters to sell them to Disney to make the money back. I bet you that's what that that's do. exactly what it is. So this is what I think is going to happen. So will Disney offer up the or Disney up their offer? And as of today, it seems yes. It appears that they will add cash. 
um, if Fox prefers Comcast offer compared to what Disney has offered. Now, this coming Wednesday, so on the 20th, on 620, on 620, (laughs) it looks like Fox is going to be gathering all their board members and sitting down and deciding, do we want to continue with Disney's deal or do we want to go with Comcast deal? Now, this is what, what would have to happen. If, if, Fox says, you know what? We prefer Comcast deal. We're going to move forward with them. Mm-hmm. Disney would have five days to match mm. Comcast's offer. They go $65 billion. So, they are playing with life-changing money. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at at this point. Uh, we're going to see probably... But that's still a what-if scenario. By the end of this week, we'll have a clearer idea of what's going on with this situation. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, Disney's just in it for the Marvel characters, anyway. No, Disney wants more. They want they want that content for their streaming service. Like, if you really think about it, like honestly, think about it. If they if they buy Fox, their streaming service, they could add shows like Futurama, Simpsons, Family Guy, like all that. Like, mm. not saying they will, but yeah, like, but they, they could. Can. You know, like they're, they because that that would just draw people. They in. would gain all of that those properties as well as so many more movies and stuff like that that they can put on there. Like they their I library would, get, would be bigger than Netflix is now. I could get behind it if they just bring back Futurama. And, and, but that's their plan. They they want to have a streaming service that is bigger than Netflix. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's that's a pretty big call. It's it wouldn't be too hard if they bought Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think Disney could give Netflix a run for its money just with its shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they... W- would it be quality? No. They essentially don't... They really don't put much of their their content on Netflix to begin with. So yeah. if they pulled it all completely... Yeah, and just released all their own and shit. And just had their stuff on their own service, and yeah, I mean, they would... Like, you would sit there and say, okay, I have kids. Do I want to have Netflix or do I want to have Disney? You know... Disney. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. Not even a question. Uh, the Avengers Infinity War writers were <gasps> guests on Kevin Smith's Fat Man on Batman podcast and answered a bunch of questions questions regarding Infinity War. It's funny that they were on a like a, a thing that says DC right on it. Well, no, no. Fat I Man, mean, I know what it is, but yeah, like, it's I mean, just... he originally. I mean, Kevin Smith's Fat Man on Batman was originally about just Batman. Mm. You know, like his first like probably like forty shows of that podcast were just Batman related. But then he and friend Mark Bernardin uh, decided to expand it, and it's all yeah, just comics. nerdy and comics and stuff like that. Movies. It, it's almost like our podcast, yeah. you know, where we cover everything. Contrary um, to belief, <laughs> ask people. We don't like Marvel, and we don't cover Marvel. Yeah. Uh, but I, I thought it was pretty interesting how they sat there and talked because the, the writers of Infinity War were the writers on Captain America: First Avenger, Winter Soldier, Civil War, and Infinity War. Like they were, they mm. wrote on those four movies, and just their process and how they got to where they were, I thought was kind of interesting. So they answered a lot of questions. Uh, I, I recommend checking it out. It's uh, Fat Man on Batman's latest episode. It just came out last week. Check it out. It's pretty cool. You learned some things. Uh, even though I hated Civil War, it kind of was like, okay, I understand why you guys sucked at writing that. So <laughs> it opened your eyes to the turd. It was. Uh, the show Lucifer seems to be getting picked up by Netflix for fourth season. It was originally canceled by Fox last month, and Netflix announced this past week that, hey, guess what? It's going to be on here now. Yay! That's happening more and more mm-hmm. um, with shows. You're starting to see shows, you know, uh, um, the Mindy Project was dropped from, I think it was Fox a couple yeah. of years back, and then it got picked up on Hulu. You know, so you see this They're happening. seeing the potential the potential there. Yeah, and it's to bring fans. And mm. I've always said, like, that's a, that's a smart idea. Like, even if it's just going to be, you know, 2 million fans, 3 million fans, yeah, guess what? You're people. getting them to your service. You're getting them to potentially watch other things on your service to where then they may stay subscribed to it after the fact. Yeah, so you could make, in best scenario... Like thirty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And best scenario. So I, I, I just think it's a smart idea. I, I'm not a big fan of Lucifer. Uh, I've tried watching, I think, two episodes, three episodes. It just wasn't really for me. But hey, to each their own. I, I'm. It, it's it's a comic book based yeah. show, so I'm all for them continuing it because, mm. it, like I've always said, just give us more comic book stuff because the more we get, the more we're gonna get. Yeah. You know, so we'll we'll ride that uh, train till it crashes. Yeah. Uh, and then Cine Europe, uh, which is a comic con in Europe, uh, it seems that attendees of Cine Europe has seen Avengers Four and Captain Marvel footage. Fuck you! 
So I don't know what kind of footage they saw from Avengers 4, but that's kind of interesting. Captain Marvel, I understand. Avengers 4 is kind of surprising. Uh, I was talking to, to Deej uh, Penhala from mm. Nerdtocalypse, and uh, you know, we were talking about, like, what do you think we're going to see at, at Comic-Con this year? And uh, we're actually going to have a, an episode coming up here where we just talk about that. But, yeah. you know, he remembers seeing that Marvel's not going to be at Comic-Con at all, mm. which I think is it's weird. stupid. Uh, because there's no D23 either. Yeah. Like, I can understand if there's a D23 this year. Like, okay, you go to D23, don't go to Comic-Con. But, I, I and I know that they're trying to keep the whole Avengers thing secret, but give us some Captain Marvel footage. I mean, th- there is no secret. You announced all the movies before Infinity War came out. Yeah, so. <laughs> like. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Anyways. Uh, and then there was a trailer for Dark Phoenix shown. Um. Yeah, that's about it. There was some positive feedback from Dark Phoenix. People weren't overly excited, but nobody really hated it. But again, we've been we've been deceived by trailers by many comic book films in the past. So, sadly, 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 sadly. Yeah, you haven't seen Incredibles two yet, have you? I have not. No, I I was gonna go see it today, but I just got behind on everything I was doing. I I will tell you, uh, epileptic warning. I like, heard about that. No, no, for real. Really? Like, for real. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, don't go if you're epileptic. It's 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 a good movie, but one you can tell, like, it gets real seizure real quick. Really? Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about something here. So Okay, let's talk about something. We but have... But, Dad! <laughs> last week we announced that we were part of the Nerd Talkless Podcast Network now. Yay! Uh, so... You know, obviously, we want to talk them up. So, you know, make sure you check out the show Fandom Vibe, uh, where it's all nerd news. It's essentially uh, our show, but with just Deej. Yeah, with just Deej. <laughs> um, he talks about it. I mean, it's good to get different points of view. Yeah. Why the hell not, you know? Yeah. Why not? No, no, it's not. You just listen to us, damn it. <laughs> Look, I'm all for it. Just like I said, you know, give us more comic book stuff. Give us more podcasts to listen to, more content to, to hear. Give us more podcasters to join with. Yeah, exactly. Network can always grow. Uh, then you have Nerd Talk Lips podcast where it's Deej and Lane, uh, mm-hmm. you know, talking about movies and such. Uh, but you can check all of this out plus more at nerdtalklipspodcast dot com. Uh, you can, you know, find all of our shows. You can find articles on there and what's going on with the network. Also, Patreon. We do have a Patreon account for Nerd Talk Lips Podcast Network. Yeah. Check us out. You know, donate a dollar. A dollar a month. That's twelve bucks a year. Twelve dollars a year. Uh, yeah. What are you gonna do with that twelve dollars a year? Buy a fucking subway hoagie because they're overpriced. No, donate it to us. <laughs> where we'll be, we'll feed you a hoagie. <laughs> Wait, what? I'll feed you a hoagie <laughs> with honestly, no shirt yeah, we, on. We want to continue growing. We want to build this network and being one of the better networks. Uh, and and we can hmm. only do that with making some revenue. Yeah, you know, we're H- not gonna help us by that. helping you. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, okay, but better yourself by listening to us, and because you're so grateful that you bettered yourself, <laughs> donate us a dollar. Uh, but definitely check you know uh, check out our Patreon uh, page. Uh, we'll have it linked down below. Um, I believe uh, we'll have it down below. five dollars a month. I'll send you three videos and twenty five <laughs> pictures of my nude body. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's, it's how those premium Snapchats work. <laughs> but, you know, we're just looking for different ways. Uh, we will definitely have, for people who do donate, we're going to have special episodes and stuff like that on Patreon that you can hear that only you can hear. Only subscribers will be able to hear. Yeah. Um, I know that None I'm, of you filthy sluts. I know I'm planning on trying to figure something out to do, you know, once a week or a couple times a month uh, where you would only be able to get it on the Patreon. I know Deej mm-hmm. is planning some things. So that's what we're going to go and move forward with. You know, that's what we're going to really try. Uh, so I... Right now, I'm in full marketing mode with our network and our podcast because I want us to get bigger. I want us to grow. I want us to be great. Uh, so that's what we're doing, and I hope you guys definitely help out. Again, a, a buck. All we're asking for is a dollar. You know, what are you going to do with a hundred of those pennies? You know, a, a dollar a month. That's twelve bucks a year. You'll be able to get some special content, maybe some shout outs, stuff like that. It'd be awesome if you helped us out. I'll give you something even more special if you donate us a one two dollar bill. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you a personal handshake. If you can get to them, I guess. Uh, dude. Don't don't promise stuff you can't actually. Two dollars. I will walk five hundred miles and I will walk five hundred more. 
<laughs> you would. You totally just did that. Uh, I'm a dumbass. Also, if you haven't uh, listened to it, um, I put our third, my third episode up of music and film, yeah. uh, where I covered themes uh, from films. And uh, again, my my music and film episodes are about twenty minutes long each, twenty twenty five minutes long each. Uh, my final episode will be up within the next couple weeks. Here, I'm putting the fin- finishing touches on it and. Uh, Colton can attest to it. I have multiple he, pages right here. He has see. like one page. Um, no, it's like four pages. It's like two. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, it's going to be where we bring everything together that we've talked about. You know, emotion, uh, atmosphere, and themes. Bring it all together for music and film. So keep a lookout for that in the coming week or two uh, because I definitely want to get that posted and such. Um, I think that's all I've got today. Buddy, how about I'm you? working on a gaming podcast. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, go for it. You, you were talking about some shit. I was just like, yeah. I'm just going to throw something together. Yeah. You know, it's going to be like Star Wars talk. Not very organized yeah. and all over the place. Dude, and, and you know, but, we're, we're talking here. Just yeah. do it by yourself, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. It's going to yeah. be like Star Wars talk. It's going to be all over the place, but it's going to be gaming. Yeah, cool. Not, not great quality because I still don't have a soundboard, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm working on it. You don't need a soundboard if you you do things right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me lick my lips here. <laughs> All right. So with that. <laughs> with that finger licking good time we had here today. Uh, I've been Robert from Bridging to Geekdoms with me, as always. Is your boy skinny penis. Colton Bird. So uh, take it easy, everybody. And uh, we will talk to you next week maybe possibly hopefully hey guys did you like that podcast did you if you did Hit that like, that subscribe, that follow, that uh, button, whatever it does that you do to listen to us more often and all the time and get all of our updates, hit that button. Like, follow, subscribe, whatever it is, hit that button so you can get all things Bridging the Geekdoms. And then don't forget to check out our partners on our network, Nerd Talklips Podcast. Check them out, listen to them, subscribe to them, like all their stuff, as well as their other show, The Fandom Vibe, which is an awesome new show done by Deej Penhollow. Uh, and then don't forget, check out our Patreon. Oh, yeah, just, just donate a buck. Just a buck. I'll be okay with that. All right. So thanks, everybody, and talk to you soon.